Good morning, everybody. Hey, good morning. Kelly Ray Kirkpatrick, Olmstead County Master Gardener Volunteer. Tom, and Tom Bellinger. Bellinger, Chair, Olmstead County Extension Master Gardener Volunteer. And it's uh, welcome to the Tom and Kelly Show, episode six. six. Here we six. are. And we're going to talk horticulture skills, which is one of our, probably our most important growth team because it kind of encompasses all of them. But we're here at Sunset Terrace, and we have a lot of um, activities going on here um, that we're going to try to bridge to. But uh, so Kelly, what do we got over here? We've got a rain garden that started. This is on the um, northern edge of the building. This collects rain from the hardscaping, also from the rooftop of the garden. Do you have it flipped yet, Tom? Gosh, you know, oh, there it is. Tom, I, know, I there think there's a camera skill for I know. <laughs> All right. Maybe, maybe, who do I know that could maybe help us out here? Okay. Mm. Okay. Are we still live? We're still live. Awesome. But, People okay. hang in through this. Hang they in. Like us. They like this part yeah, of the show. Yeah, I think they like this part of the show. Okay, gosh, the, darn the technical, it. Uh, due to due to technical difficulties, uh, operator error. Uh, this show will be temporarily uh, what? Uh, uh, unenjoyable. Unenjoyable. <laughs> gosh, something like that. Okay, here we go. All right. So really, we are. And uh, I am looking at the garden. Yay, the garden, here it is. So this is a lovely rain garden. Um, accepts water off the roof from the hardscaping and then as the water just flows down. And uh, this is a project with Olmstead County Master Gardeners and they tend this and it's also um, a part of the work that's done with the youth. Let's walk in the road. Let's walk in the road. We live life on the edge and walk on the road. They're still dropping off students here this morning. Sunset Terrace. So we're heading over to the sign. It's just been freshly painted. And uh, we've got a little a little lending library here. And we've got another example of some pollinator plants and just some other plants. And this ties into the horticulture skills that we're doing as one of our Olmsted County priorities this week on episode six. And why do you think horticulture skills are important, Tom? What's, what's kind of going on in our world today? Well, the thing with horticulture skills is it really ties to our mission. And if you look at our mission statement, our mission statement is to provide research-based horticulture knowledge and practices and deliver educational outreach and uh, project-based efforts <laughs> to inspire change. And this is the important thing because we're all about promoting healthy... Oops, I got to get myself on there. Where am I? Okay. Promoting healthy, healthy people, people, healthy, healthy community, and, and healthy, healthy planning. Okay. I, I like how economics is exempt from that. <laughs> yes. All right. Which is always usually so in the in the forefront of everything we do. Yep. It's only one of those one of those three leg one of those stools in the three legged stool of sustainability. Yep. So here we are at uh, Sunset Terrace, and this is a little bit a little bit of pollinator section right here in the front of the uh, school. Well, we've also got some edibles. You see the asparagus in there. Oh my gosh, here it is. And yeah, look at it. So it's it uh, getting ready to go seed, or is it already seeded? So. No, that, um, I think it's a dioecious plant. Okay. So, and I see... This one, this one is going to seed here. Okay. So it's really neat that you can mix edibles with your ornamentals. That's a great, great thing that you can do. The foliage, the spurn-like foliage on asparagus lends itself nicely to the hostas and the junipers in the background on the salvia that's here. So this is just a little entrance garden. And so, Tom. Can oh, I you... noticed there's a native bee, a bumblebee that was enjoying these cone flowers. Oh, nice. Ganesha, yep, there's a big one right there. Nice. Okay. I'm going to say it again 40% of our food comes from the pollinators. Imagine the pollinators being gone, and imagine some of that food being gone. It's a no And look at that. There's a, the green. What's the. What is the green one? Oh, I wish I had my bee. I it's right the there. kitchen guide right now with me. Oops, I'm tripping over Okay, this yes, one. I know. Yes. Is it this one right here? Yeah. We're squishing plants. We're... Oh, what is that guy? Oh. Anyway, he's busy. He's cool. He's, he's I can't... busy. He's not oh, as he's steady good. as the other ones, so... All right, so let's... Uh... Okay, so now we're going to switch around here, and we're going to... Uh... So let's talk about um, these beds as we walk down to the CGR beds. Okay. So... You've got, you've got two lindens over here against the building, but there were three beds. So they've cut down a tree, and let's keep walking down this way, and we'll talk about they've why these removed. trees were cut down. I think because they've... This, this ties right in with the horticulture skills of what we've been talking about. And when trees get planted too deeply, they cannot thrive. Trees need to have an exposed root flare at the base, 
and trees need to be able to um, grow with their roots to anchor the tree in place. So girdling roots are damaging to a tree, trees planted too deeply. And then flip your screen again so we can see what's happening in the crown of this tree here. Let's look at this one because this, so this is, a is a good really example. This is a really great example of a tree that's been planted too deeply. And you can see at the top it's... Uh, the crown is starting to die out. out. But you can see right here, I mean, this tree is, I mean, you don't see any th sense of any roots um, up at the top here, and you don't see where it's, the crown right. is and kind of reached. What's the... really unfortunate about this is linden trees. This is the Tilia uh, genus. Linden trees are one of the major pollinator trees. Yep. Um, I remember at the State Fair, the uh, Minnesota State Fair, I had some basswood honey for the first time. Gosh, this must have been back in the early 90s maybe it was the most incredible honey i've ever had way better than clover or wildflower honey wow. so keep your screen your screen flipped here so I'm we can see we're coming we're up walking. on we're coming up on more beds where there's trees have been removed so here we've got an incredible and the canopy is going on this one too yeah we can see how deeply this tree is planted absolutely no no um root flare on this one at all yep and um so we're taking away a major source of, of pollinator plants here with these trees not being planted properly. They also cool the concrete for youth when they're out here unloading from the buses and they could also create an outdoor classroom area if teachers wanted to come out here and, and um, teach their students. So it's really important that we understand what we're doing when we plant anything so that we can have longevity yes. of that planting or of that particular plant. It's really, yeah, if we're going to promote healthy people, healthy community, and healthy uh, planet, we need to have sustainability in these uh, landscapes. So do we see the base of this crab apple here? Look at that crab apple. There you go. Much better? Much better. You've got a root flare. You've got some exposed roots there, which would be nice if they were actually covered with a little bit of mulch so we don't have um, soil. Yeah, but how about... Living, living cover would be even better, which is another horticulture skill, right? To learn about yep. living cover versus a mulch cover. But this is, this is a great example of a tree being planted at the correct depth. The only thing that's missing here, Kelly, is it doesn't have that volcano oh, kind of oh, mulch oh, oh, kind of oh, look oh, there. Oh, mulch volcanoes? Yeah, mulch <laughs> volcanoes. Yeah, that's a horticulture skill we don't want to develop. Yeah. So who do we have you keep flipping back and I'm forth flipping and I'm, back and forth here because I'm kind of looking around it looks like we have some other things going on here so. yeah so who's that over there what's this oh my gosh it's Jane it's Jane 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 was is our past chair she mentored me to hopefully become a good leader this year but Jane she didn't teach camera skills however. she didn't teach camera skills <laughs> thankfully but <laughs> but Jane is here in the garden and Jane Jane's going to walk us through what they're doing here at Sunset Terrace. Good morning, all. This is uh, one of the children's garden residence sites. And we have two other... CGR. Yeah, the CGR. We have two others that are going on simultaneously on uh, Mondays. Uh, Lisa Gifford and her team meets at Gage. And then this team here meets on Wednesdays. And on Thursdays, Rochester Boys and Girls Club meets with Kathy Hoyer and her team. So, Wonderful, yeah. And I see you got some of these uh, pollinator signs that we got out here. Um, these are signs that are made by the Arboretum. And uh, I got to get, uh, well, let's see. So the Arboretum and in conjunction with the Extension Master Gardener Program. Um, we also have our Olmstead County sign here, which is nice. And uh, yeah, you've got some uh, wild, is that some bergamot back there? Or what do you got back there? You got some. Yep. Yeah. I see some milkweed coming, milkweed that we let go in here. But we've been trying to bring back pollinators. This garden was uh, overgrown when we took it over a few years ago. So it's just been a lot of um, hard work, but fun. And the uh, Children's Garden and Residence Program has been really rewarding for all of us. So let me show you our little gardens that we have here. Okay. Okay, so this is our pollinator garden. Okay. And then behind you, Tom. So this is all about pollinators, which we kind of, there was a little bit of pollinators and there was some some edibles in the front. Yes. We looked at that. Okay, and then and right then... down in here with the, the fencing around it. Okay. We're trying to get this to go. It's been a little struggle, but it's sunflowers and zinnias and part of the curriculum as the children study the sunflowers measure their growth things like that 
Oh, super. Has, um, so pollinator garden, sunflower garden, and then behind you, Tom, if you keep walking. Oh, some two. raised beds, okay. Yep. And so um, the kids are doing that small plot gardening, and so that we have about 10 children that we've been working with, and each of them have their own little spot. Oh, and that's tomorrow's wonderful. lesson has to do with decomposers and a little bit of harvesting. So okay. I think our radishes are ready. Wow, some this of the is. Lettuce has come up. Our peppers have started to flower. So, so why is, raise bed at these uh, schools? Well, this is what, you know, <laughs> this is what we were given when we came here. A lot of the schools are using raised garden beds, and I wanted to try to do some in-ground gardening, so we took out all the yep. garlic mustard, that, or <laughs> garlic mustard, uh, the garlic chives. Garlic they chives that were spreading all over, yep. They have taken over everything. They're a great pollinator. Yep. Yes, but that's all that was in there. Yeah. And so then we, you know, amended the soil here with the raised garden beds. And I like that you got pictures of what it, what the produce is going to look like yeah. when they're done, so the the youth can see that. Yeah, and we have, um, one of our volunteers did that. Oh, that's she cute. Son a few years ago. So we that's a happy radish. What? Uh, so what age groups are you talking about here in this garden? The curriculum is designed for generally second grade. Okay. Yeah, and that's for uh, working with second and third graders. So okay. That's perfect. Okay. Perfect age to get them started because they still have that enthusiasm. Everything is exciting to them at that yeah, age, right? So, great. yeah. So, uh, you know, the CGR teaches three components of gardening. So it's in the garden, so the actual hands on work of learning yep. to garden. And then um, we have a science lesson that's built in each week and then a nutrition lesson so every week we put together a little recipe and enjoy uh, a snack and that goes home with the parents so how many uh, schools are we working with right now um, Jane? right now well this is part of the school age child care so community ed in the rochester public schools this is their after school and summer school program mm -hmm. so we've been asked um, if we could work at not just Sunset Terrace and Gage, but Franklin Elementary. So those are the three schools okay. that offer the summer program. So we, you know, with more volunteers, we'd be able to um, do that. So I think it'll keep growing. This was started uh, two years ago, and then this year we added Gage and the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and we when we got started this year, we were still under the uh, COVID-19 safety protocols from the yeah. University of Minnesota Extension, and Jane and others put together very elaborate a list of protocols that they would follow in, able, in order to work with the schools and what their protocols were so that they could do some, some education here. And, of course, now those protocols are eased up, and it's just wonderful because we can enjoy summer with them this, this year. So... All right. Do you want to see any more of the gardens? Well, I, could, I, I tell you, one thing I like about this, because I have a rabbit problem, so mm -hmm. raised beds. And I'm getting older, too, so raised beds are probably something in my future. But anyway, so yes, what else do you want to okay. show us here? Well, then we have a couple other little gardens. Okay. So we've tried to deal with some of the landscaping here and uh, so working good. with, you know, the grounds crew and mowing. So I think they've appreciated that we've cut back a few things. Uh-huh. And over in this little corner, you know, that was just all dirt. So we added some mulch and some transplants. Okay. And I was able to get, from my years of teaching, some uh, compost beds. So this is called Compost Alley. Kim, so okay. We've been talking. Kelly and I kind of, we did talk, talk a little bit about composting um, in the past. And I know we've been doing composting over there, <laughs> trying to get a selfie here of all the, the leadership chain here. Um, so, yes, we've been talking about composting. So what's unique about their composting approach here? Is anything? Well, this was just um, a student that I had years ago. His uh, family tried to do some composting at their home, and they just were unsuccessful in asking me oh, there's... I'd like to give this a go. And so I took the bins. Yep. There were two of them. And out at an, another garden site and we never you know made good use of it so i thought this might be a good place yeah we could tend to them. it gets enough sun in this spot here well, then it does you know once it comes a little 
adequately. So you got some a lot of greens in there. Where are you getting your browns? You getting that from? Just some coffee grounds. Okay. Some leaves. Yep. Coffee grounds are good. Yep. So, so what, this is Compost Alley. Compost Alley, okay. It's always fun to have street names for these children, yep. right? Sesame Street, and this Compost right here, Alley. <laughs> this is Tomato and Pea Row. So okay. The rabbits have not been in here, thank goodness, but I know I've scared them out of that, uh, the bushes often. Yep. So they're here. It seems I've like had rabbits chew through thinner material than that, well, but. Yep. Yep. There's a ton of those holding it down. And friends have donated the different. Um, so what do you got growing up on here? This just. No, a, I don't know. That's that's been there. So it's kind of. This used to be. That's Boston Ivy. Ivy. Boston Ivy. Okay. Yeah, Parthenosis is uh, tripe. Yeah, you know, the school was totally landscaped at one time. Okay. And so this we. Okay, so you got your tomatoes and you got your 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 peas along here that you intend to have them. What we'll climb along here? Gonna get. I don't know. I guess <laughs> I should look at my seed package. Well, yeah, maybe. You might need a little trellis five, on here. Five feet tall. Then we need to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Need to you need an egg up. panel. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, Kelly's taught did me a lot about vegetables. Did you get the here, so. seeds from the seed library for the peas? Some of them. Okay. So some of them might be. We offered. Um, what did we offer? Not not uh, Amish snap this year. I think um, sugar, sugar and and sugar, sugar and I can't remember. But it, it's a shorter pea, so you okay. might be you might be yeah, safe might with some of them. Up. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. This and over here we got some squash. Uh -huh. Looks like and some corn or what? Don't walk away now. Okay. Yep. So this is carrot. Carrot, oh, oh, cor yeah, carrot corner. corner. Okay. So how tiny carrot seeds are in here, in here with little ones. So we did our best to try to fan them. All okay. Out. So carrot corner is just behind compost alley. That's that's that's, that's okay. Alley, carrot corner. So we got carrots right here. Okay, yep. Carrots. This is a People are going to incorporate you. Yep. Yep. You're going to carry the message forward as they get older. So a wonderful experience with horticulture skills is a way to really um, offer sustainable. Yep. For so, many things. so should we start thinning those carrots? Um, some of them need to be thinned. I would wait. Yeah, a little bit taller, because, right? Uh, yeah, I'd wait till they get a little bit bigger. And at this stage, they grow fairly slowly. You okay. Know, you can start thinning them once they get much, much older. And those ones that come out, sometimes they're about a quarter of an inch around and two okay. inches long. And you can just chop them and add them salads. They're yummy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So you got some corn back here, and then you got. No, 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 pull the root out, the, the whole, whole thing will come out. Yeah, you yep. just toss them in the Well, and this is Three Sisters Garden, so... <laughs> three Sisters Garden. Three Sisters Garden, so we're trying to incorporate... The Three Sisters are... Um, we have corn, we have the beans that are... Oh, well, that's what I was looking at, the beans are in the it's back. to crawl up here. And they that's might, they're here. probably going to need to be something taller here. Trellis well, for them or no, something, too? No, These because, beans? No, the concept of Three Sisters is, um, this is a First Nations, um, typical growing strategy so the corn gets planted first and then about 10 to 2 weeks later you plant the beans at the base and these would have been pole beans that were used because okay. those beans weren't really in existence back then and then you plant the squash so the corn acts as a support system for the pole beans which also fixes nitrogen in the soil because corn is a really heavy feeder and then you've got squash to crawl around the base and the squash likes a little bit of shade that's cast by the corn and beans, but it also keeps the soil cool and retains moisture because it's covering up the soil. Yeah. Okay. So we it's out. Yeah. So let's, can we talk, we uh, got a few more minutes left. Can we talk a little bit more about the horticultural, horticulture uh, skills growth team? And, you know, it's yeah. a very big team. I think there's 41 members, yes. 12 interns, and Jane's a lead on that group. And Tell us what's going on out that the COVID protocols are kind of okay. eased up well, here. We were just uh, thrilled to meet in person. So we came on the campus. Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we met out on the lawn here um, okay. on a nice summer evening after school. Yep. Out. 
and we just sat around in a circle and, and chatted and I brought you know some talking points for needs that we have um, with the speakers bureau. The so speaker we talked bureau, about, yeah. We talked about the fair that's coming up, Olmstead County Fair at the last weekend. So please July. note that everybody, we the fair is, is coming back yeah. and we're going to be there. Master Gardeners, we're going to have a table at the horticulture building. building. Yes. Um, we're going to be there to ask ask a gardener a question. Yeah. Um, let's talk plants, those kind of things. things. And we're also going to try to have some theme days where we Oh, theme days. Love theme days. Theme days where it's like, okay, how do we divide a perennial? <laughs> uh, maybe some container gardening and what are companion plants for containers. I'm still learning about three sisters, so, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, three sisters. <laughs> um, let's see, what else we're going to try to do? Dahlia. Oh, dahlia. yeah, we're well, dahlia. Okay. got a growing dahlia uh, example. Yep. yep. Start to finish with dahlias, you know, that cycle of the, of the dahlias and doing some things with children. And we had one more. Oh, yeah. And now that I have grown all these tomatoes, what do I do with them all? What do we do right. with so tomatoes? Right. Some things like that. Yes. And then I just want to put a plug in for this Saturday. Uh, there will be a few Master Gardeners at Olmsted County History Center. This is the history mm. fair going on mm -hmm. out there. Yep. So we will mm -hmm. have a Yeah, there's table. Saturday? Is that what? Yeah, we're going to be there Saturday from 9 until 4, uh, where the medicinal and heritage gardens are located, kind of on the round. And we have up. not toured that yet on our little show. No, we yeah. haven't. That'll come up. We're, We've got many weeks left. we got many weeks left, and I know... to just hang Beth, on and just really... Well, maybe you can come out there next Saturday. Maybe we can do something like that. Beth Plutzer, yeah. I know, is really yeah. working hard to get that heirloom garden going. It's been a little challenging this year with yes. this so, the spring. So, so think about everything we just, Jane and you, Tom, have been talking about. This is what the Master Gardeners are all about. Jane is a retired Rochester Public Schools teacher. She taught second grade. Her forte is CGR, um, the Children's Garden and Residency. It it caters to her skill set, her talents, and and the beliefs. I I lead I lead local food, and local food is really really important to me, as is clean water. So that's my forte. That's my skill set. And Tom, um, well, he's working on his camera skills, as we know. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm learning a heck of a lot from these two yeah. ladies. Uh, but pollinators, They're just wonderful, you have a yeah. passion for pollinators, and he's a he's a he's a master brewer. He's got a great <laughs> he's got a great brew house, so he's a little bit into local food. But so that's the beauty of Master Gardeners is we're a diverse group that caters to diverse learning, and we want to incorporate more diversity of projects, of subjects, and of content in the work that we do. And we invite you to join us. We invite you to come along with us as we explore and learn together and do teaching on so many of these wonderful things in, in our plant world and all that it offers um, our communities and uh, the health of the planet and the health of health of us. So with that, I mean, we've got the wonderful cameo here today <laughs> with Jane, but I yeah. think we're about ready to wrap up. Okay. And uh, stay tuned for where we go next week. So why don't we uh, wave goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning yep. in. Thank Rocky you. Day. Rocky day. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.